Good evening. This is Crime Classics. I am Thomas Highland with another true story of crime. Listen. That's the way Robert, Robbie Boy Balfour, walked across the room when he was angry. And this was one of the angriest days of his life. Uh. The object of his disaffection, a schoolteacher. And this is what Robbie did. <coughs> Hit the schoolteacher across the mouth with his leather glove, which was, in that day and age, a challenge to a duel. Not me, said the schoolteacher. Uh. Said Robbie. <laughs> Went Robbie with his pistol. Tonight, my report to you on Robbie Boy Balfour, how he wrecked a big prison's reputation. Crime Classics, a series of true crime stories taken from the records and newspapers of every land, from every time. Your host each week, Mr. Thomas Highland, connoisseur of crime, student of violence, and teller of murders. Now, once again, Mr. Thomas Highland. In 1707, the current saying around Inverkeething, Scotland, went something like this. Tisn't it bad enough we suffered the Glencoe massacre? Tain't awful enough about the Darium scheme, but they had to go and join up with England and call us now the United Kingdom. The sentiments of the time among the kilted folk, whispers of bribery in the Scottish Parliament, threats of war, talk of open rebellion, a time of angers and furies... And between these passions, gentler ones. Tisn't bad enough we suffered the Glencoe massacre. Tain't awful oh, enough... hush, hush now, Robbie boy. You're saying that so often, I'm wondering whether you believe it. I believe it plenty else. Why am I going away? Oh, Robbie boy. Aye. Let's get to the party. Let's throw the harshness of it and come to its softness. Aye. Aye, Glenys. Or say to me something soft with those sweet lips of yours. Aye. And Spain, how long for you, Glynis? Oh, they say the hotness of the Spanish sun makes a warm torrent of your blood, and ever and always there are Spanish maidens. I'll not look at them. Oh. I'll not look at them. Aye, but they'll look upon you, handsome Robbie, bonny Robbie, and say things in that strangling tongue, and turn your head aside and make you forget a healing lass. Named Glynis. Upon my father's tartan, I swear it, and upon his barrel. I go to Spain only to protest what is done here. This exodus of the Scottish young men will show them true how we feel. Oh, I'm proud of you that you do not stoop to violence, that you do not stay to fight the English, but make a witty protest by going away. They'll see. They'll see. Oh, harsh again, the conversation turns soft. Soft, Robbie boy. Make soft words and close. Die, Glenys. Glenys of the heather. Glenys of the gores. Glenys of the gloom. And you'll come back to me. And you'll come back. Robbie Boy Balfour sailed away the next day, and some 43 days later he got to a city in Spain named Madrid, where he met some of his Scottish friends, and together they did protest Scotland's union with England. And at home, Glynis waited. She busied herself with spinning flax and arranging wildflowers and brief walks in solitude, the normal everyday things a girl did in Inverkeething when her bonnie was over the ocean. Then... On a day in April, an event in the village. Mr. Henry Stenhouse appeared. I'm the new schoolmaster. Knowledgeable of books and syntax. Excellent with arithmetic and the sciences. Certainly do I boast of my penmanship. For look. Oh, lovely. <laughs> and certainly for my manner of composition. For listen. You are comely. And you walk with the gentle sway of silken stalk. Lovely. And was taken to the hearts of the villagers, for many of them had told each other their need for learning, 
And Mr. Stenhouse could fulfill it. So they gave him a celebration. Uh, it is true, Mr. McPherson. The sum of the square of the other two is... Mr. Stenhouse. Ah. Mr. Stenhouse. Yes? Uh, may I speak with you for a moment? Of what? Uh, of a favor to ask. Favors us neath the moon are favors to become boon. Or so Radcliffe said, poet, that he is. Oh, neath the moon, then, Mr. Stenhouse. Ah. <laughs> now... To the fever. Oh, yes. I've a lad. A lad? A bonny, a love. And he's in Madrid. Protesting? Aye. And I wish to write to him of how I miss him. You cannot write? Only scratchings and simple words. But such as you... Could help you. Yes. Tell you what to say. Oh, yes. Sweet words. I want you to. Glennis. Aye. A thing just happened. What thing? I saw the moon... And immediately then I looked into your eyes, and the stars were there. Come close to me, Glennis, so that I may look into a star. Oh. That I may press my lips into your hair. Oh, Mr. Stenhouse. Mm. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. My landlady with my evening gruel. I've come for the favor, Mr. Stenhouse. To write your love, your bonny. Aye. Then sit there. And take quilt a hand and write as I say it. My darling, my own sweet love. There is a wraith of mist over the heather now. And in it, mysterious, my beloved's heart beats. Or is the flutter of some red and crested bird? Oh. Or perhaps it is only this throbbing within me. Oh, my. Oh, my beloved. How though the space between how I feel you near to me, cheek to your dear cheek, and my breath on yours. Oh, oh, oh look what I've done. I spill the come, ink and... Come, to me. I, I, I cannot help myself yet. Your words. Dearest, dear. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Come back later, Mrs. McPherson. I didn't want my gruel the new. What does that mean, Les? Being in a strange country and finding need to learn the language. I love you. Ah. Um, what does this mean? What it says here, la mujer este en la casa. It means I love you. Everything means I love you. Put that in the book, Robbie boy. Robbie. I, Les? I love you. You must know I love you. Eh, uh, Les. See, si, querida. In Scotland, far away, there's one to whom I've promised myself. She waits for me. What woman waits? For what man? Uh, Glynis waits. I'd stake my soul on it. And the days rolled into weeks, and the weeks into months. And in Inverkeething, this was going on. Oh, how sweet you are, Henry. Oh, you've sweetened my life. While in Madrid... Eh, uh, no, Papita. And in Seville... Ah, uh, sorry. No, little less. And in Barcelona... Ah, uh, no, Rachel. No, no, no. And in Cuernavaca, a town in Andalusia, famed for its beauties. Well, well, no. Uh, 
I'm sorry, Marlena. I'm sorry, Lasno. I'm, I'm promised to another. Well, listen how things progressed in Inverkeithy. Glynis. I love it. I've written it down and drawn a line beneath it and added it up and subtracted and added it again. And there is an answer to it all. I love it. We'll wed. Yes. Oh, yes. There now. Oh, how happy can a maid be? <laughs> oh, Henry. Yes? Robbie boy. What of him? Oh, what of him? What if he comes back? Oh. What if he comes back, Henry? Oh, he'll not come back. Those young men who have gone to Spain, how many of them come back? My own brother did. Well, for a week, and went back to Spain again. Aye, then there's not to bother of Robbie. <laughs> no. Ah, then we'll wed. Come good Charlie Kensington Day, we'll wed. Come that day. Making a vow like that, and not knowing that even as she said it, Robbie Boy Belfer was on the high seas, sick of Spain and sick with love for Glynis. And there was a good wind and a good sea, and swiftly sailed Robbie into Scottish seas and friendly shores, and the remembered and loved weather of mists and leaden sky, away with the sun-drenched brightness of Hispaniola, on with the kilt and to horse. I'm home again. So ride me to Glynis, you bunny seed. Ride! Across moors and skirt the bogs, across glens, upland, and hooves on stone and field. And Robbie Boy was at the home of his beloved. Glynis! Glynis! Oh, the blush that comes here. Oh, the blessed cheek, the softness. Where shall we put the pewter, Glynis? Who's he? Who's he? Robbie, this is Henry. Henry. Uh, so that you'll know who I am, sir. So that there'll be no quibbling about it. I am the betrothed of Glenys. And when the sun comes up on good Charlie Kensington Day, we shall wed. Is this the truth, Glynys? Oh. Say it, lass. Tell me, is it truth or no? It's truth. Ah. And now, sir, we were discussing Glenys and I of the placing of the pewter, so... Sir... This mark upon the floor. I dare you to step over it. And if I do, there will be a duel. Aye. I do not wish to duel. Therefore, I'll not step over it. Sir. This bun block I put upon my shoulder. Knock it off. No, for I do not wish to duel. Then I'll put it down. And then this I do. <laughs> my gauntlet in your face. You... You want me to duel, not me. Sorry, not me, <laughs> said Robbie. <laughs> Went Robbie with his pistol. are listening to Crime Classics and your host, Thomas Highland. No actors, no tricks, no special effects will be used in Night Watch, the new CBS radio thriller making its debut next Monday night on most of these same stations. Actual tape recordings are made at the scene of the exciting action met by a prowl car in its nightly rounds. These will be what you'll hear on Night Watch. A reporter and a police sergeant ride the Night Watch and bring out the authentic material you will hear. Night Watch, premiere next Monday night. Now, once again, Thomas Highland in the second act of Crime Classics and his report to you on Robbie Boy Balfour, how he wrecked a big prison's reputation. A word to those who have grown rusty in their knowledge of the code of honor, as it was practiced in the early 18th century, the Scottish code was different from all other codes in that 
seconds were dispensed with. Why, you ask? Well, it may have been because of the notorious Bruce Trolley affair, where the seconds were slaughtered instead of the duelists. Or it may have been because of the famed edict of Prince Jamie of Glon. Whatever the reason, and the reason is still hotly contested by experts, that is why Robbie shot the schoolteacher where he stood. I gave him an opportunity. But he wasn't armed. Armed or not armed, he didn't want to fight. There are men like that. Cowards. Cowards who steal other men's losses when other men are overseas. He is not dead. What? I think you have only wounded him. Only wounded him, but... In the shoulder, see? But I shot him twice with each of these pistols. And you hit him twice, see? One in each shoulder. As I meant to. Oh, truly. Truly what? He was a coward. And yet you loved him. I did not know he was a coward. What will you do now? Robbie. I... Robbie, boy. I... Oh, how sweet it is that you are home. Sweet for whom? I close my eyes and and I'm in your arms again. Now open them. What do you see? You apart from me. As it will always be. As... Your love cries out, Glennis. He's hardly scratched. For a coward grievously hurt. Go to him, my girl. Bend to him. Heal him. The power of public opinion in Inverkeething was as strong then as it is now. A wedding day had been set on good Charlie Kensington's day, and a wedding there was. Glynis McFarland and the schoolteacher Henry Stenhouse, uh, the latter worthy on a litter. And what of Robbie Boy Balfour? He was a hero, a man who had avenged his honor, who had come out of Spain unscathed by the dangers there, had come home to find his beloved in another's arms, and had known what to do. And now, at the schoolteacher's house, now that he had a wife... Spoon me my gruel, wife. I, Henry. I. It was forced upon us, you know. What was? Our marriage. The folk could not have tolerated the severing of our vows. I knew it. The gruel, lass, that gruel. Henry. I cannot love a coward. I cannot. I cannot. Oh, who else will you love? Him. Only him, Robbie boy. Him. <laughs> Glynis! Glynis, don't leave me! Glynis! Come back! Come back! Oh. stay with him. He's your husband. Oh. Your husband, chosen by you. Oh, Robbie boy. I Go to him. For what reason? Oh, finish him. Kill him, you mean? You started to do that. Aye. Aye, that's so. Hey, then do it. Go and put another bullet in him. I tell you a thing. Aye. You're wild, Glynis. Your heart's a stone that snuggles into the gorse, and yet... Yet what? I cannot live without you. Open! Open the door! She was seen entering. She was Glenis Stunhouse, wife to schoolmaster. She is here. What of it? I must see her. Glenis, that's the sergeant of Invocating. And he wishes words. What will you, sergeant? There was a screeching and a yelling about. And a neighbor entered into your house to see what the matter was. Your husband it was. Your husband of one day... In a delirium he was, and I've come to tell you. We'll give to him what potions are necessary. I'll come presently. He needs only prayers. What? He lies a dying. Only a miracle can save him. But it was only a shoulder wound. He got out of bed to fetch the bowl of haggis and slipped. Infection immediately set in. He lies a dying. Your husband lies a dying.
Now, this might have looked like a happy turn of fate for Glynis and Robbie Boy. Oh, what a happy turn of fate this is for us. Glynis certainly thought so. Aye, aye, it does. Robbie thought so, too. So, when Glynis went home to her husband... Uh, he are dying, Henry. Oh, hold the quilt to me, Glynis, for I'm shivering. That will do you good. The quilt will overheat you. While back at Robbie's house, he had some news. It's my duty to tell it to you, Robbie boy, Robbie lad. Tell me what, Judge? As judge of the county, I'm telling you what's true. Tell me what, Judge? Though we may admire you for what you've done. Shooting Henry Stenhouse. Though we may admire you for defending your honor. There's a law, Robbie boy. There's a law, Robbie lad. What law? That death goes with death. What are you saying, Judge? That death goes with death. An English law. And now we're one with England, our law, too. If Henry Stenhouse dies, then he'll be dying of his wounds. If Henry Stenhouse dies, he'll be dying because you put them there. Mm. Therefore, you're standing trial for his dying. Oh, now to my way, Judge. Oh, where are you going, Robbie boy? Where are you going, Robbie lad? To see the schoolmaster. Tell him a thing. Not to die? Not to die. So out of my way. If apologies will keep you alive, schoolmaster, I apologize. Uh, if humbling myself before you will keep you alive, I humble myself. Stay alive. Uh, spring in Scotland, the most beauteous time, stay alive. There, there's music to be heard in the land, stay alive. The sounds of the seasons to be heard and the colors to be seen, oh, now, it'd be foolish to die. And for a man of such learning as you, for a young man such as you, stay alive. That's the word. Ah, it did not be fair to those of us who love it. It did not be fair to leave an emptiness in... Robbie. Robbie boy. He looks better, doesn't he? He's dead. Robbie boy? Robbie lad? I. You're under arrest. Robert Balfour, the jury, by the plurality of voices, having found it proven that you did discharge a pistol against Mr. Henry Stenhouse, and that Mr. Stenhouse did die within two days of the day he was wounded, then are you a judged prisoner, and you will be beheaded at the Cross of Edinburgh on the 7th of May, 1710, and ordained of all your goods. Jailer. Robbie, Robbie mm. boy. Mm. Awake now, Robbie. Tis I, tis your love, and come to visit you to give you comfort. Uh, oh, it's miss. pale and drawn you are. Even in this poor light I can see. No one man expects to look healthy on the eve of his beheading. I have a plan, Robbie. What? A plan. What do you mean? For your escape. Oh, you're daft. I'm daft with love for you. Then being daft, why do you talk of plan? Listen, it's a good plan. There's no plan to get me out of this prison. There's a way to do it. What way? Tell me this. Where is the jailer? Look past my shoulder and tell me where he is. Aye, aye. As in the corridor at his supper. Then keep the talk flowing and make laughter or tears, whatever suits your fancy. Yet only do what I do. Very well. Talk, talk. Oh, oh uh, I, I, I heard the song. <clears throat> the melody I cannot sing yet uh, goes like this. Money Charlie's is now away, safely o'er the bounding sea. Many's the heart that'll break at twilight if he doesn't come home again. What? Um, well, I, I, I don't know what else to say. Well, babble, then. This I want to say to you, nor is it babble. I love you too. 
You're comely and you're worthy of a loving. What does the jailer do? <laughs> oh, he sups. Are you ready? Aye. Then I'll call to him. Jailer, I wish to leave. I will meet you in Aberdeen by Auntie Bledhose there. Aye. Now, here's what happened. While they were talking, they changed clothes. And, dressed in Glynnis's clothes from Tartan to Tam, a Robbie boy walked out of jail. The switch wasn't discovered until the next morning when the headsman came in the cell to take his victim to the block. I'm not a Robbie boy. I'm Glynnis, and you can't cut my head off. But she was wrong, as wrong can be. She was ignorant of an old Scottish law. If a body help a body escape a felony... A body then must stand in a body's stead, and ignorance is no excuse. That finished Glynis. The authorities looked for Robbie all over Scotland. They left no stone unturned, but didn't find him because at the very time they were looking... Yo te amo. In Spain. Yo te amo too, Carmen. Robbie boy. Sadder, but wiser. just a moment, Thomas Highland will tell you about next week's crime classic. Robbie Balfour, tonight's crime classic, was adapted from the original court reports and newspaper accounts by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. The music was composed and conducted by Bernard Herman. And the program is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Thomas Highland is portrayed on radio by Lou Merrill. In tonight's story, Ben Wright was heard as Robbie, Betty Harford as Glynis, and William Johnstone as Henry. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Steve Roberts, and Norman Field. Bob Lamont speaking. Here again is Thomas Highland. Next week, St. Petersburg, Russia, in the year 1801. The river Neva was frozen solid that year, but if you cut a hole in the ice, it was a marvelous place for a girl to put the suffocated corpse of an officer. It's listed in my files as the general's daughter the Tsar's Lieutenant, and the Linen Closet, a Russian tragedy. Thank you. Good night. Jack Benny of CBS Radio will be on hand again this Sunday evening, wistful for Waukegan, boastful about Beverly Hills, violating all rules for violin playing, daring all to deduct a dollar from his tight grasp. Jack's magic turns it all into some of the finest comedy on radio. Be listening for our Jack Manny show this Sunday evening and share it with the whole family. Lionel Barrymore's Radio Hall of Fame is great Sunday night drama on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>